Welcome back. This is Dr. Me at the Actual Academy. We're looking at a problem where a couple, Tim and Pat, each have their own car that they drive to work every morning. And on any given morning, Tim's car will not start with probability 0.03. Likewise, Pat's car will not start with probability 0.07. So assuming that the two cars operate independently of one another across the days, we'd like to compute the probability that exactly one car does not start on at least one day in the next 30 days. So as, as I'm reading this problem here, I'm subconsciously already thinking ahead in terms of the combinatorics involved in, in solving this problem. So when we're looking for the event, or at least the probability of the event, that exactly one car does not start on at least one day in the next 30 days, combinatorially trying to map that out can seem rather explosive and, and complicated either doing a mind experiment or even trying to write that on paper so you should toy with the fact of considering uh, computing the the probability of the complement of that event and think about well what does the complement look like because it might be easier to compute the probability of the complement and then use what I'm about to talk about, fact one, and then take one minus that to arrive at the probability of, of interest. So that's actually how we're going to solve this problem. But before we do so, let's review fact one. This is a very simple but powerful rule in probability, basically the complement rule. It states that the probability of a given event is one minus the probability of its complement. So this is something definitely you should keep in mind when you're solving these problems that a lot of times, again, if you're looking for the probability of A, it may be easier combinatorially to compute the probability of A complement and then subtract it from 1. Another fact we need for this problem is the probability of the union of two events is the sum of their individual probabilities minus the probability of the intersection. So. Let's, let's break this problem down into something a little bit more simple, where instead of considering 30 days, as the problem asks, let's consider only two days and see if we can simplify the combinatorics a little bit and get a feel for what the complement might look like. And once we do that, we can feel confident that we actually do have the complement of the event A in the more general case. So, in doing so, let's go ahead and define, and I won't rewrite this, event A as this piece here. And let's define that as A. That's the event of interest. Now, I already took the liberty here of enumerating all the possibilities that can occur for Tim's car and Pat's car for two days and I've indicated a car starting as an O and car does not start as an X and basically enumerated all possibilities where the column here represents the day and the row represents whether it's Tim's car or Pat's car so for example this first element in the sample space would represent that both cars do not start the first day and then the second day Tim's car starts but Pat's does not. So this would actually be a point in the sample space that's in A. So let's just go ahead and check that off right there. And we see that because we have a day where there's exactly one car that does not start. And that's in day two. Pat's car does not start. Okay, if we use the same logic on these remaining points or elements in the sample space, we see that each one of these satisfy event A in that we have exactly one car that does not start in at least two of the days. Here, turns out we actually have two days where exactly one car does not start. But remember the problem said at least one day. So it doesn't have to be exactly one day, it's at least one day. And here we have it again. And here's a situation where we actually have in a given day where both cars do not start. And then the second day both cars do start. So this does not satisfy the conditions of event A. 
and nor does this one. Example here, we have both cars starting on day one and then both cars not starting. We'll realize here in a moment these are actually in the complement of A. And here we still have these points here are still in A. These elements here also have both cars starting both days or both cars not starting. So these are not in A. So let's go ahead and define uh, what we think a complement is. It should be clear what it is now because of what we've just illustrated. Turns out that a complement are those points where either both cars start on a given day or both cars do not start on a given day. And we see that these points here, and I'll do this in green, I'll just put a check here and formally show you that these are points here are an A complement because we have both cars actually starting on a given day or not starting. It's easier to compute the probability of that because the combinatorics are much easier to, to handle. So let's write that out. So A complement is both cars start or both do not start in the next 30 days. Now we didn't really have to go through this exercise of enumerating all the elements in the sample space for this smaller case where it, it, we have two days, but it does give us some confidence in knowing that, yeah, that does make sense, that in all situations where we have both cars starting or both cars not starting, that everything else would have at least one car not starting. And we see that through this enumeration that that's indeed the case. That's a good first step to actually identify a complement and having confidence that we can actually compute this probability much easier than trying to compute the probability of, of A directly. So in doing so, let's now try to tackle computing the, the probability of both cars starting or not starting on a given day. And that's where fact two actually comes to play. Let's define two more events here. Both cars start on a given day here and we'll call that C like I have it notated here, or both do not start, okay, we'll call that D. So C represents the event that on a given day both cars start, and D represents the event that both do not start. And we're going to have to end up computing this probability for 30 days. Now this part will actually be simple, but let's just first compute it for a given day. And again, just to make sure that's clear, this is for, right now, a given day. So just one day out of the 30. So let me turn the page here. In order to compute the probability that both start or do not start, we are really looking for the probability of C or D. And from the formula, we see that that's equal to the probability of C. And this is true for, for any events, C and D. We take the sum of their individual probabilities minus the probability of the intersection. C is the event that both cars start. Okay, we were given back here that Tim's car will not start with probability 0.03 and Pat's car will not start with probability 0.07. So that means that Tim's car will start with probability 0.97 and Pat's car will start with probability 0.93. So it's essentially an application of this formula. So this is equal to 1 minus 0.03. Now we need to multiply it times the other car starting, 1 minus 0.07. Okay, that's just a probability of C alone right there. And then this probability of D is that they both do not start. And that's just 0.03 times 0.07. Now we've computed probability C plus the probability of D, and we need to subtract off the probability of the intersection. Well, the intersection is actually empty. So the probability of this event is zero because we can't have a day where they both start and they both don't start. Okay, so this piece right here is actually zero. And if we work this out, that's equal to 0 0.9042. This is the probability that both cars start or both cars do not start on a given day. However, since we're looking for this event to happen for each of the 30 days, because then we're going to end up taking 1 minus that probability to find the probability of the event of interest, and they're all independent across the days, this probability is just 0.9042 raised to the 30th power. However, this is the probability, though, of the complement of what we are looking for. Thus, 
applying our complement formula, the probability of the event of interest is just merely equal to 1 minus this piece here. And that's equal to 0 0.95125. Because, again, once we take 1 minus that, that gives us all the other possibilities here in green. It takes out what we don't want and gives us the probability of, again, the event of interest. And that's, that's our final answer. Thank you very much.